Welcome back our esteemed viewers. Uh, before in this topic of discussion, which is uh, raising well-adjusted kids in the 21st century, Dr. Ibrahim Doba was discussing uh, how the anxiously attached kids and I've forgotten Dr. The second one. Securely attached, Securely attached kid, which is anxiously attached kid are those ones that were not leaked. Uh, in, in humans, not in rats actually. While the securely attached kids are those ones. get the attention of their mothers. Yeah, their exactly. yeah. So, And the securely attached ones are those ones that got the attention of their mothers, just like the ones leaked in, in, in mice. So it's, try, it's given us the comparison between both of them, their reaction to external stimulus in life and the rest of them. So, Dr. Sir, please kindly continue with that uh, discussion of uh, discovering our children at third uh, birthday. Yes, if you read the book of Paul Toff, mm. uh, How Children Succeed is the title of the book. Mm. He mentioned uh, the research by Mary Ensworth, uh, where he said that uh, the, the researchers believe that caring, early caring for, for babies, mm. gives them a secure base mm. upon which they can explore the world. If you don't care for your babies, they don't have that secure base. Mm. Everything, they, they are afraid of this, they are afraid of that, they are afraid of, you know. If somebody shouts, mm. you know, you are not anxious, you are afraid. Mm. Which you should be, you understand. Naturally. Yeah. So if somebody comes to comfort you, mm. that anxiety is not there, you know. Mm. It's been relieved. But if nobody comforts you, mm. that fear turns into anxiety. And it happens again until you internalize it. Yeah, you the baby in your subconscious mind. Yes, yes. So it, wow. it, it's now it become keeps, part of you. Yes, it, it, it keeps on compounding, you know. It becomes mm. part of you. Every little thing gets you anxious until you are not able to function. Mm. And uh, because nobody teaches you how to relieve yourself of uh, fear and anxiety, you are not able to, to cope. Yes, you are not op able to cope with uh, challenges. Mm. Yes. Doctor, I, I, I know you were talking about this. Your discussion actually remind me of something now. It's a story, actually. But before the story, it's making me realize the fact that babies or that are at the cradle stage, they have subconscious mind that is attached to things. The way they see it, they relate it. Mm. And they act upon it. Mm. It's just like what you are saying. It, it used to be said in the Arabian uh, terms that al ilm of a sagar can nax can al hajar of al hajar. The learning, the the education that a cradle goes through is like whatever they learned at that particular age is like somebody putting writing uh, something uh, in, in a rock on a rock. Mm. So if if an inscription is being inscripted on a rock, it stays there. Yeah, it stays in fact, yeah. and you any time you go, you see it there. So it is in them, it is embedded in their system, in their subroutine, in their subconscious mind. Yes. Um, there, was a, there, there was a story, I really don't want to take you out of your context, but it's very important. Because the story goes as thus: there was this young boy of four years old, his grandpa came home, came to their, his father's and mother's house to come and visit, because, uh, to come and visit the son, which is his dad. When the man came, he was old, he was weak. He was ill-treated. While they were at the round table of to to take dinner, the man was because his hand was shaking and you know he couldn't stand it, you know, because he's old. So everything was spoiling on the ground. If they give him food, he can't hold it. Spoon, come on, spoon, he can't hold it. So the boy uh, was observing. The man who is the father, who who is uh, the son of this old man, felt embarrassed in front of his wife. Both of them, they felt like, man, please, you better keep this man at the back. So they kept the man at the back. They remove him from the dining table. He's falling everywhere. He's pouring uh, milk on the ground. The food scattered. What happened? The man went on sobering. He, he was crying. And the child was looking at, at the man. He was observing. So what happened? The next time they were eating, they now served the food for the man on a wooden plate. He said, oh, he has broken the, you know, the, the glass plate they had. The child picked it up. So the following day, the child got some wood. He was trying to cut the wood. When they met... The child, they said, oh, my dear boy, what are you doing? He said, oh, mom, dad, I'm trying to carve out the wooden 
uh, plate from this wood so that when you guys are old, I will also use it to serve you the way you are serving my father, yeah. my, gran- my, my grandpa. Mm. They quickly, they burst out in tears. They quickly recall that what they did was wrong and they corrected it. Just to support what you are saying, doctors, mm. you know, how children get attached to what they see and how yeah. they react to it. They always think this is the right thing mm. yeah, because my mommy and daddy are doing it, so it, so it must be the right thing. Uh, so, yes. so also a child who is being uh, emotionally mm-hmm. taken care of, he mm-hmm. feels, oh wow, mm-hmm. that confidence is always there. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Because if you look at the life of the Prophet, no. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there no. was a time he was praying no. and he shortened the prayer. Yeah. And he, t- he explained to his companions mm-hmm. that I shortened the prayer because I had a baby crying in the mosque. Mm-hmm. I wanted to remove, re- relieve the, the mother of distress, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. because he knew that instinctively. The mother will want to go and, you know, attend yeah, to the baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. exactly. Now we know that attending to the baby immediately is the best. Mm. You know, mm. to the extent that it's uh, forced the, the, the prophet to shorten this prayer. Hmm. Because the prophet didn't want the child to be traumatized uh, throughout life, you know. So I'm giving you, let me finish the prayer quickly so that you can attend to the baby. So if the Prophet Sallam mm. actually shortened the prayer mm. because of the immediate attention that mm. the baby needs mm. is something that one has to actually yes, uh, yes. adhere to. Yes. Mm. yes. So it's uh, there is no Prophet wisdom mm. behind uh, parents saying that let him cry. It's good for his lungs, you know. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> yeah, yeah, some say that it's good for his lungs, let, let him cry. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, you sure. attend to the baby mm. even if it is 10 times. Do it. Mm. It's an investment. Mm. It will reduce your costs in taking care of the baby in the future. Exactly. Yes, I, I, I was uh, uh, a, a kindergarten teacher. I was a primary school teacher. Yeah. And I, I could differentiate the children mm. who were, you know, who were uh, who received immediate care, immediate attention when they when they were babies, you know, and uh, surprisingly, they are they are children of well-to-do parents. Uh, you yeah, know? do you see they are more confident? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you talk, they talk back. Yes, they feel like what what do I what do I need to get from they, you? They, they engage with you. Yeah, in, in constructively. Yes, yeah. uh, like like my son when we were abroad. He, at uh, the age of three, we came back to Nigeria, mm. and uh, before then, he could engage with you in a, in, in a conversation confidently. Mm. But when we came, we put him in an Islamic school, and the teacher started beating him. Yeah. So he, he lost the confidence. Wow. You know, a child of four years old, mm. you are beating him mm. to learn the Quran. Mm. The Quran that is not compulsory for him to learn. Nah, instead, that particular of encor- yes, yeah. instead of encouraging the baby, you are beating the baby. Exactly, we are coming to that, you yeah. know, in the next chapter. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Seriously. When the prophet sure. said, Law mm-hmm. you know, if so yeah. you are you are so you are you are struggling with the Quran, you have mm-hmm. double reward, but you are beating the child. Exactly. Yes. We can actually see another example of giving uh, kids attention and care mm-hmm. at the time they need it most mm-hmm. in the same life of our Rasul when Al Hassan his grandchildren, uh, Hassan and Hussein, Rasulullah will be in solar, he will be in sujood, they will climb his back, mm. Rasulullah will not force them to drop down. Mm. For the, for them to even have the God to do that, mm. publicly shows how free they are yes, with their exactly. father. And they will climb, Rasulullah will wait until they are satisfied, they will drop, Rasulullah yes. will, yes. you know, raise off again. Yeah. And he won't say next time, don't bring these children to you. Yeah, house. of course, he didn't say that. Like, even in Mimbar, they will be disturbing you, yes. they will carry them. You know, even in Salah, he will carry them so that they will... So, you see the kind of... Uh, like what kind of fee he was working on? Yes, uh, unfortunately, has... we don't follow the practice of the people. Well, like, well, like. Because when I was in graduate school, I was taking my child to, to the mosque. But uh, like all children, of course, he was too... Uh, he was too active, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a day that he went and removed the, the cap of the imam. Oh, you know? That's in serious. The, in the mosque. The imam didn't bother. But there was a sheikh from Iraq. Mm. He told me, I said, stop bringing this child to the mosque. Yeah. I said, but it's the sunnah. We bring the children to the mosque. Mm. I gave him the example, the yeah. story you told now about uh, Hassan, Hassan, Hassan and Hussein. Yeah. He said, no, you can't use that now because 
At wow. that time, mm -hmm. the, 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 the prophet was poor. So the the house and the monks is the same. How does that affect it? Well, that is why I told you. He was uh, yeah, a very knowledgeable it. sheikh, but yeah. uh, we don't we yeah. don't practice what the prophet practices, yeah. and we give some useless excuses. Yeah. Because the house of Rasulullah was closed, but the house of Fatima, which where this house, the the grandson were, is not actually uh, really close. Yes. So, Allah, Allah. Yeah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Alhamdulillah. And the baby that cried behind, mm. they also, oh, also the came house. from somewhere. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Alhamdulillah, that's actually very insight, very interesting, and uh, truly really open our eyes to see the necessity on how we should uh, deal with our kids, our children, with open heart. You know, making them feel free at home. If they are not free with their parents, they, it, it will be very difficult for them to exercise that uh, freedom. And some outside. of the things we we blame them for. It's part of being an infant or being a child. You know, hmm. you say, but why is he doing this? I've told the baby enough times, or I've tell, told the child uh, repeatedly not to do this. But that has been, children forget, you know. Mm. So you have to repeat yourself, you have to repeat yourself. You show understanding at that age. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, the, 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 in fact, the prophet mm. said, I was talking to Sheikh Nuruddin Lemo, mm. and he said his child wasn't praying. And if you ask him, he say, I'm not seven years old. Wow. Yes, I'm yet to be seven, nice. yes. I also have a daughter, Fatima. If you say, come and pray, you say, no, I don't pray. <laughs> you know, Sheikh Nuruddin Lehman told me that he didn't, he didn't ask him to pray, you know. But now, as a, as a twin or a teenager, he loves prayer more than everybody. Yeah. So we shouldn't force mm -hmm. children to pray when even the prophet didn't say they should pray. Mm -hmm. Before the age of seven, don't even tell them, come and pray. Mm -hmm. Just observe them. If they see you praying and they join you, okay, you understand. But don't even say, the prophet said, tell them to pray at the age of seven. Hmm. And you know? strike them lightly at yeah, ten. At ten. Hey, if, they refuse if they refuse to pray. So, you know, okay. we can't love Islam more than Prophet Muhammad. Yes. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, uh, I think it has been very... Very, very enlightening one, uh, this uh, topic, raising well-adjusted kids in the 21st century. Uh, we've learned a lot from this discussion and, and the relationship between we and our children, why it should be strengthened and uh, it should be well-adjusted so that it will, they, will, they will not necessarily need anything outside the house mm. for, the, for you know, people to rely upon, to confide in, or people to find courage in. They have, they, they've got everything they need with their mom and dad and the family in the house. And that is what Islam taught us, teaches us. That is what science have been uh, confirmed. discovered, yeah, yeah. confirmed to be. So that is the discussion for today. We hope uh, our viewers have actually benefited a lot from this discussion. Uh, we hope Allah make it easy to, for us to imbibe it in our character. And we really appreciate the presence of our doctor, Dr. Ibrahim Duba, for taking his time coming over to discuss this issue for us to benefit from. Jazakallah khairan, sir. Thank you, our audience, and we ask Allah to make it easy for you and us, and we hope to see you in our next episode. Thank you for your time and everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.